Nat Geo's hostile planet takes viewers to some of the world's harshest terrains and examines the wildlife there. I'm Zach Laws of Gold Derby, and joining me now is Guillermo Navarro. He's an Oscar-winning cinematographer, and he is also one of the executive producers on this show. Uh, so Guillermo, uh, tell us a little bit about what distinguishes this show from other uh, nature documentaries of, of the same kind. Well, um, part of my role in this show was to actually uh, address things in, in, in a different way. And uh, I felt the need to, to, to change the, the narrative. So traditionally, the, the host is the, the main source of the narrative. And, um, and that's been, you know, stipulated for years, for decades, it's been done like that. So it's someone that's talking to you, driving you through, through the process. And I wanted to lower the level of the voiceover. I mean, Hustle Planet still has a voiceover, but then I wanted then to have make use of the film language to tell the stories. So I believe that the visual language is the, the important language of our times. You can, we cannot imagine a single day without it, right? And this was a show that was uh, also uh, to, to, to address a younger audience. So I felt that the need and the, and the opportunity to, to change how you do this by telling stories visually. So in the past, not only the voiceover was the leading force, but also the, the photography was more observational. It was from the distance, you know, providing images for the narration. And here, what I wanted to do is to have, as you know, it was part of my contribution of, of coming from the feature world, where I can I have to put a sequence in, in that has a dramatic arc. So, what I wanted to do is to to put the lens right there in in at the moment, and not have it just at the distance being observing. So I wanted to create a much more immersive experience, to make it an experience, to be there with them in their journey. And that way you can connect emotionally with the animals. And, and then it, they, it, they, they become a character, a character that you're following and you're, you, you're learning more what it's like to be them in those conditions. Right. I mean, it is very immersive, and uh, you uh, you make a lot of uh, good use of you know new kinds of equipment like drones and, and things like that. Can you just talk a bit about how uh, this this newer, more lightweight equipment um, helped you uh, in that uh, in creating an immersive experience? Sure. Um, it's uh, let's say that we, that this was the time that where we are technologically allowed. To, to have this kind of a principle, right? And um, the role of the filmmaker in the ground in this kind of films is to be pretty much invisible and not affect the, the animal behavior. You cannot be there and then start by, by having your big footprint um, creating a, an awareness of your presence and then affect that. So, the, the equipment, it is smaller, it's more efficient, it's very sensitive, et cetera, et cetera. And, there's, and because of that, there's ways to move the camera that before was impossible to do. So you picked one example, the drone. The drone was an incredible tool for this for the show. You, you can not only fly with it, but you can also be at sort of an over the shoulder of the whales as they advance etc. Things that you were not able to do a few years ago. Um, in addition to that, I mentioned also the sensitivity in low lights. We were shooting in, in, in the jungle, where it's, you know, in the, in the very bottom, it's very dark, some, etc. So it was, it was a time to do it. The, 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 the equipment uh, enabled us to be able to put the lens where it had to be and, and help this uh, you know this principle of, of of being immersive and telling the story right there where where the lens should be, and certainly I'm sure it helps with uh, helps with safety concerns. You know, getting right uh, in there with those animals that uh, are not very friendly to humans sometimes. <laughs> well, it's a little bit like uh, it's it's um it's one of those situations that when 
when you're in the ground shooting animals or, or environmental issues in terms like a hurricane or, you know, avalanche, is that when people want to run away, your crew wants to get in. So it's a little bit uh, like a military operation in that sense where you're, you're, the drive is to get as close to to where the event is taking place, even though that is uh, much more risky. And, but the, that's that's the drive. We, you have to be there to get the, the great shots. No? Well, so, I mean, take us to these uh, terrains and tell us just a little bit about some of the complications of, of production that you guys encountered. Well, we decided uh, to to divide the, the series in, in environments. So we were addressing uh, different environments that, that had yeah, between so between you know the, the the nature of it and how uh, the devastating effect of climate change that's having on the environment, how is that affecting the the animals that survive there? Uh, so we decided to divide it in in, in that. So we have a, a, a mountains episode, which is all up there. We have an oceans episode that's all underwater, basically. We have deserts. We have polar. We have jungles and gra in, in grasslands. So each one has its own things. Each one has its own particularities, and and you need different things and different skills to 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 be there. Because uh, as a reminder, those those crews, those in, in the floor, have to survive that too. So if you're in the Himalayas trying to get a slow leopard, then there you can be thir three weeks in the cold with little food, uh, just surviving to see if you can, if you can get a glimpse of it. You know? So every, I would say that I don't think there's one that is harder than the other. They're all are particularly hard. And, uh, and there's a lot of endurance. It's, uh, you have to have like the animals or other cities to, to go through it. And how do you, I mean, you know, uh, in, in creating this immersive experience, um, how do you still though keep yourself from you know disrupting the environment that these animals are living in so that they can you know continue to act in their in their natural way well i mean there's um you have to be as invisible as possible your footprint has to be the the minimum and also it's there's a sort of a golden rule that you should not participate that you should not affect the animal behavior it's not about saving that turtle that, that is in jeopardy. It's uh, you have to be there and register and document what really is going on. So that cannot be affected by your presence. Right. Because then by the same, if you start doing that, then by the same token, people can believe, oh, you put this here, you put that there. And uh, so you, you lose credibility immediately. So you're there witnessing and documenting and, and building that, an, an emotional art. Right. You mentioned the uh, climate change element, and um, you know that is certainly something that is becoming more and more uh, prescient in these uh, in these nature documentaries. Can you talk about that element of the storytelling a bit more? Sure. The the I mean to talk to clim about climate change. It's uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a uh, it's a must in this time. It, unfortunately, the theme has been politicized and ideologized. So is that a, the discussion is not there. The discussion has to be in how we can improve the conditions and protect the speed of this, of this, of this changes. And um, that's why for me it was urgent to do something like this, but it was also clear that I was not gonna do a pamphlet and, and you know, become one of those uh, ideology uh, speculations. So it was here we're presenting what's happening. You can connect the dots. We're not hammering you in the head to this, believe this, believe that. And, uh, and the animals are, are a great, great story towards them because they, they are the truth. You know, they cannot fake you or they cannot you know, make a speech that, that is gonna be a contradiction of how, how they, their, their lives go about. Right. I mean, I think um, it's not an overt message, but, you know, the message is there. I think that, you know, watching it, uh, one of the things I think about is, uh, you know, this is a beautiful world that we have and uh, we should do everything that we can to keep it that way, you know, because we could 
uh, lose all of this, all of these beautiful places and all of these animals. Yes, and it's uh, and it's our it's our responsibility. They're doing their part, surviving, and there's a mirror of what's coming to us. And uh, it, it's not that if we don't do anything, even even if we don't do anything, this is already in motion. So it's it's getting progressively harder. And um, so you, we have to do our part. It's a uh, it's the same planet. It's theirs too. So they're doing their part, they're surviving, they're doing it the best they can. They're showing incredible resilience and bravery and commitment to, to keep living. And uh, and we have to do our part in protecting the planet to and protecting ourselves and them. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a whole global community. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy sometimes to just think about how this affects us humans, but you know, it, it affects animals and sea creatures. And I mean, it affects every bit of life on this earth. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned wanting to make this a more visual experience, uh, you know, more uh, of a visual storytelling type of show. And, you know, you are, of course, a longtime cinematographer. So can you talk a bit about how, you know, that experience uh, helped you with this one? Yes. Um, I started my career doing documentaries. I was, I, I was, I was growing up in Mexico that I'm surrounded of culture and color and, and beauty and social issues, etc. So I was a very uh, awakened guy. And I was out there shooting documentaries. Uh, then I started a career in the feature world. And I brought a lot of my learning curve of the documentary to bring into the feature storytelling, uh, the sense of truth and, 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 and reality. And that by doing that, that that presence of reality allow me to venture in parallel realities and you know, in fiction and the past and the future, et cetera, et cetera. So when I had the opportunity of this, of, of participating in a, in a show like this, uh, National Geographic started reaching out to filmmakers and in, in sort of re-inject into their process uh, a filmmaking participation and narrative. So me being a very strong believer in the in the film language in the visual language uh i saw it as an opportunity to bring my know-how and my experience in in the feature world where i have to build a sequence and and create a dramatic arc so you can have emotional connectivity with the story into this of course the terrain is entirely different the, the, the plan, the, the floor plan is completely different. So I don't have a, an actor that can tell him now, okay, now since you're gonna sit down, then you're gonna walk to the window and think. Uh, here we are at the, at the, what's gonna happen with him? We have to be just prepared and fully aware of what, would, what can be the next step and be ready for it. You know? and, uh, and I insisted very much that it was much more valuable to see the progression of the event with a dramatic scope and with a dramatic eye than having someone explaining you exactly what's going on or what you want them to understand what's going on. Because the visual language is also a carrier of truth. That's what's happening, you know, and you build it. So I'm completely convinced of it, and that's um, my, my filmmaking contribution to, to this. Yeah, and I should say, I mean, you've also directed a lot of uh, works of uh, scripted uh, uh, television as well. So, I mean, that yeah. certainly is a very different experience from uh, nature documentaries as well. I mean, how did that uh, help you in, in doing this too? Well, it, it, it's a little bit the same. So directing uh, fiction it forces you, I'm not talking only about my, my cinematography experience, which brings the need of being a, a completely, you know, Con being control of the film language, but here, direct and fiction is also is the choice of shots, the, sh the, the choice of camera movement, tying in the process, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and I brought that know-how to this, and I sort of spread the the tone of this to the to the teams, and 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 you know they're used to do it a, one way that has proven right and and, and efficient and for for many years, but this this 
twist on building a sequence uh, clearly pays off. You're very invested in it. Right. You won an Oscar for your work on Pan's Labyrinth, uh, which was one of many films that you made with Guillermo del Toro. Can you talk a bit about what that recognition meant for you? Well, um, it was a tremendous moment. Uh, while we were doing the movie, we were never thinking, oh, we're going to, we're after an award, we're trying to do the best movie we can. Mm -hmm. Actually, a movie that is fully charged with film language. Yeah. So it's it's really a, a, a visual experience and it's immersive and you're there. Uh, so all, my, all, all the work that I did with him was very uh, encouraging and, and educating of how together we would, we would make use of the film language. And so that is like the, the, the biggest thing that I take from that experience. Uh, once I was um, there and then the, the nominations came in and, and the awards and all that, was, it's, uh, it becomes a very big thing. It becomes uh, the major recognition, let's say. And I was the first cinematographer from, from Latin America to win one. Yeah. And then it continued. Now we, if you add the Oscars of Mexican filmmakers, now we have a, in, it's, it's, a it's a very good amount. So we, we prove that we have things to say, things to contribute. We, we brought in our culture, of our, our vision of the world, and we connected more the dots of what, we have, what are our similarities and differences and, uh, and, and how to play them out. Yeah, I remember that year in particular was just a huge boon for Mexican filmmakers. You know, you had uh, uh, your movie and of course, uh, Children of Men from Cuaron and Babel from Inuritu and uh, you know, all the people who worked on those films getting nominated and, and winning awards. And now, of course, there's not an Oscar race without a movie by one of those three guys, it seems. So, That's incredible. Yeah. Well, Guillermo, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, congratulations on your work. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. And sure. thanks to all of you at home for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you visit us on goldderby.com to make your predictions and get all the latest award show news.